Welcome to Talk Nation Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. It is my great pleasure to welcome to Talk Nation Radio this week Francis Boyle. Francis Boyle is a professor of international law at the University of Illinois College of Law. He has served as counsel to Bosnia and Herzegovina and to the provisional government of the Palestinian Authority. He has represented the Blackfoot Nation, the Nation of Hawaii, the Lakota Nation. He drafted the U.S. domestic implementing legislation for the Biological Weapons Convention, known as the Biological Weapons Anti-Terrorism Act of 1989, and he has been a strong advocate over the years for the proper use of the power of impeachment. Francis Boyle, welcome to Talk Nation Radio. Well, thank you very much for having me on, David, my best to your listening audience. Uh, Very glad to have you on. Should Donald Trump be impeached? Well, I've taken the uh, position, certainly, that uh, his uh, attacks on Syria Uh, clearly violate the uh, War Powers Clause of the United States Constitution, the War Powers Resolution of 1973, and the uh, United Nations Charter. They they would constitute uh, crimes against peace as recognized by uh, U.S. Army Field Manual 2710. So certainly, uh, in my opinion, those are impeachable offenses for sure. Is there a reason you name Syria in particular as opposed to Afghanistan or Iraq or Yemen or you know other places where uh, Donald Trump has dropped bombs? No, I just think that you know that the clear the Syria situation is is a clear cut uh, case for uh, impeachment. I guess the rest we'd uh, we'd have to talk about that. Uh, the uh, uh, press release we put out was prompted by um, Trump's two latest attacks on uh, uh, Syria. Yeah, it seems that there's a view that if the latest attack was on Syrian forces as opposed to some other forces in Syria, then that makes a difference. Uh, but it seems to me the the list of violations you went through, the UN Charter, etc., covers killing anybody in Syria, or for that matter, Afghanistan or Iraq or anywhere else that the United States is illegally killing people. Well, David, I, you know, I'm a law professor. I, I, I just ha- have to be precise in my analysis when we're dealing with each one of these countries. But certainly uh, uh, when it comes to Syria, uh, the United States government has no right to be in Syria at all. And as you know, we have... Uh, uh, military forces up there in uh, Raqqa. Uh, we're bombing up there. Uh, we also have uh, military forces uh, in Syria itself near the uh, uh, border with Jordan. Those are the ones who uh, fired uh, this time. Um, so th- our whole presence in Syria uh, is is completely illegal, unlawful, uh, unconstitutional. It's never been approved by uh, Congress, and so definitely that's that's impeachable for sure. Uh, uh, from my uh, perspective, we, we, you know, we can talk about other countries if you want to, but um, you know, I, I have to be precise. I just can't lump <laughs> everything uh, uh, together in, um, you know, in one bucket. Uh, absolutely. Well, I, I would be delighted to simply impeach Trump for Syria. I was just trying to grasp what the distinction is between Syria and, say, Afghanistan, because it seems that Congress uh, allows both to go on, provides the funding that is used for both. Uh, the UN Charter covers neither, uh, etc. So I am just, you know, looking for what's the what's the legal distinction between the two. Well, again, I, right now I just... You know, I want to talk about Syria. If you want to talk okay. about other countries, we can. Um, and uh, in in terms, of, you know, I, I've seen also references to the fact that uh, Donald Trump apparently owns stock in, in Raytheon, you know, in the missiles that he sends into Syria. Uh, is Does that sort of corruption make it make it any worse or any more of an impeachable offense? Or is it uh, is the attack on Syria enough? Well, that's why I'm arguing the attack on Syria is enough. I I think, uh, you know, if you look at other potential uh, 
uh, articles of impeachment, and I've I've been this uh, through this before. I was uh, uh, counsel to the uh, late great Henry B. Gonzalez on his uh, uh, bill of impeachment against uh, Bush Senior for the Gulf War, and uh, Ramsey Clark and Gonzalez and I set up a national campaign to impeach Bush Senior for that war. Um, and when when the war started, Congressman Gonzalez introduced his bill of impeachment. And in his memoirs, uh, Bush Sr. did state that the reason he stopped at Basra and did not go all the way to Baghdad was that he feared impeachment. So we did have, have an impact there. Unfortunately, we couldn't stop uh, uh, that war. But right now, uh, you know, I'm certainly prepared to say that, that Trump's attacks on Syria uh, are impeachable offenses for sure. It's it's a slam dunk to use that phrase uh, type of uh, situation. Yeah, right there. I could I could draw up I, those that article of impeachment now if uh, a member of Congress wanted to see it. As I recall, you and Ramsey Clark also presented a a case for the impeachment of Bush Jr. Uh, to the Democrats in Congress uh, just a, a week or so before the the attack on Baghdad, uh, you know, which could conceivably have saved over a million lives uh, and. The Congress members there, uh, as I recall from your uh, account of it, uh, accepted the the logic of the of the case, but decided it would be better for the Democrats to uh, wait until the next election uh, and be able to campaign against the war. Is that what happened? Basically, yes, David. Uh, uh, what happened is uh, uh, just before the start of uh, Gulf War II by Bush Jr. Uh, Congressman uh, John Conyers, the uh, ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee that had jurisdiction over uh, bills of impeachment, invited uh, me and uh, Ramsey Clark to come in and argue the case for impeachment uh, before 40 or so of the uh, top lawyers uh, affiliated with the uh, Democratic Party. And uh, he had a, uh, a draft bill of impeachment there uh, by me, drafted by me. You can find it on the Internet if you want to look for it. Um, and uh, Ramsey had one, too, that was, was similar to mine. So Ramsey and I, it, w- it was a two-hour debate. Uh, almost everyone there were, were lawyers. Uh, Ramsey and I both, both argued the uh, case for impeachment. And uh, what happened... The the decisive factor was that uh, John Podesta appeared, and no, Podesta is uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, presidential uh, campaign director, or was. And uh, he said that uh, he was appearing there on behalf of the uh, Democratic National Committee, and the uh, Democratic National Committee did not want a bill of impeachment uh, put in against Bush. I also had one for Cheney and Ashcroft. Um, So, you know, what can I say? It's clear the the Democrats uh, were in on this war. I mean, that that really put the kibosh on on the whole thing, Uh, whatever they say in in public. Uh, I'm not criticizing Congressman uh, Conyers, of course, if you, you know, if he he had bucked the will of the DNC, he probably would have been stripped of uh, his seniority and everything else. Uh, I know his heart was in the right place, uh, you know, but he's a team player, and so uh, we never put, put, put the bill of impeachment in. Uh, I regret to say it was one of the great uh, disappointments of my life, certainly, uh, and all those people you know, the, the estimate is maybe 1.5 million uh, Iraqis were exterminated uh, in what could only be called a, a war of outright genocide against the Iraqis, and it still uh, continues today. But what your listeners have to understand is that the Democratic Party fully uh, supported that. In, um, in fact, Congressman Podesta, Conyers... Podesta who was Clinton's campaign manager, was the one who personally put the kibosh on it. Um, so, you know, what can I say? I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm a political independent, so uh, I 
you know, it wasn't for me to tell Democrats what to do. Although Ramsey, you know, is a lifelong uh, Democrat, and he, you know, he tried to make that argument uh, from from the perspective of a lifelong Democrat. I said it. Uh, I made the best legal argument I could. Uh, what can I say? Yeah, you, yeah, I'm sure you did. You did, and I recall uh, what it looked like. Congressman Conyers also discouraged his colleagues from introducing uh, any legislation for impeachment, uh, implying that once he was, once the Democrats had the majority, then he would handle it. Uh, but of course. When they had the majority uh, in uh, January 2007, uh, Rahm Emanuel openly told the Washington Post, we're going to keep the war going, uh, keep Bush and Cheney in place, and campaign against them again in 2008. That'll be better. Uh, and, you know, for whatever uh, strategic reasons, uh, John Conyers and the rest of them went along with that again. And that's exactly what Obama did. He, uh, you know, Obama uh, was behind me at uh, Harvard Law School. We had the same uh, jurisprudence teacher, Roberto Unger, who publicly would later call Obama, quote, a disaster, unquote. Um, and Obama used that strategy to get elected president in um, uh, 2008. Uh, but he, you know, he lied, tricked, and deceived uh, all of us, as did the uh, as did the Democrats. Yeah. Again, I, I'm, you know, I'm a political independent. Uh, I, <laughs> I did not vote for Obama either time between you and me because uh, I knew all about his career behind me at Harvard Law School. He was a total uh, opportunist, um, you know, from here in Chicago. Well, I'm not in Chicago, but I, uh, he, you know, he lived up there in Hyde Park and uh, south side of Chicago, where I'm from, and I had contacted people up there about him, and they said he was a total opportunist. So I never uh, uh, supported him twice uh, voting for uh, for president. I, I voted for other candidates. Um, Right. What can I say? We're, we're speaking with Francis Boyle, who's a professor of international law at the University of Illinois College of Law. Uh, Francis, I, I've got a, a list of other articles of impeachment people are proposing for Donald Trump. Let me, let me run a few by you and tell me if you think they are impeachable offenses or not. Um, Domestic and foreign emoluments clauses. Uh, domestic clause, the president shall not receive any other emolument from the United States or any of them, any of the states. Uh, the, the foreign clause, no person holding any office of profit or trust under the U.S. government shall without the consent of the Congress accept any present emolument office or title of any kind whatever from any king, prince, or foreign state. Trump seems in clear violation of both from day one. Well, you know, I, I'm not here to uh, uh, criticize anyone else who wants to uh, impeach Trump one way or the other. Mm -hmm. But let me point out the uh, sociology behind this one. When uh, Clinton was Secretary of State and was involved in all the uh, slush funds there with the Clinton Foundation, none of the uh, uh, lawyers pushing this argument on the emoluments clause, uh, who are all affiliated with the Democratic Party, talked about impeaching Clinton on the basis of the emoluments clause. Not one of them. Uh, every, every lawyer uh, behind this uh, campaign on the emoluments clause is affiliated with the Democratic Party. And they did not uh, push any of this at all with respect to Mrs. Clinton, the Secretary of State, and the Clinton Foundation slush fund. So uh, I myself, um, you know, if, if these Democratic uh, Party lawyers want to push this, they can't. The only uh, Republican they have on there is this fellow uh, Richard Painter, uh, who, who used to teach here. They use him as a front man, <laughs> claiming that, um, well, he's authoritative uh, because he served as the, uh, in the White House count counsel's office as uh, ethics advisor uh, to President Bush Jr. Well, you know, that <laughs> makes me laugh that, that here uh, Painter and Bush Jr. are covered in blood from head to toe, and he's there lecturing us, Painter, uh, on, uh, on ethics. 
this would be like serving as the uh, legal advisor uh, on ethics to Genghis Khan or something like that. Yeah, only so, more, more you know, murderous. I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not discounting the Emoluments Clause, but, you know, you have to look at who's making it. Yeah. And all the lawyers making this argument, the lawyers who have filed the lawsuit, they're all uh, legal hatchet men for the Democratic Party. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to get involved in that, uh, I guess you can't. The, uh, the domestic, there it is. That's, the domestic said, clause, Francis, uh, is specifically about the president, not a secretary of state, but the foreign one uh, could certainly be applied to either. So I guess my question is, it, granted, the part of the, the, the gross, blatant partisanship, et cetera, it, were, were such people wrong not to bring such charges against Hillary Clinton, or are they wrong to bring them against Donald Trump? What I'm saying now is that it's total hypocrisy under these circumstances. And I'm not getting involved with my, per personally for me, I'm not getting involved with a gang of uh, uh, legal hatchet men for the Democratic Party uh, who uh, supported Clinton and uh, supported Obama for uh, all these years. Right. But. But if I don't... others want to get involved in them, that you know, that's fine. That's your business. But o Obama, but I'm not getting involved in it. Obama dropped a lot more bombs on Syria than Donald Trump has yet to drop on Syria, and I don't think any of these individuals brought up impeaching Obama for bombing Syria either. Uh, yet we're, well, we're willing right. to it's say only... it's a legitimate charge against Trump. Uh, so that. Uh, uh, why you know? I mean, well, there's there's gross hypocrisy, did, but it's still an important charge to bring, is it not? <laughs> well, and not only did uh, Obama drop bombs on on Syria, he was the one uh, who started the so-called uh, color revolution that we're seeing in Syria now. Uh, none of these uh, Democratic lawyers did anything about Obama. They were fully supporting uh, Obama. I I tried myself to get a. Uh, uh, bills of impeachment or bill of impeachment in there against Obama, and I failed. I, you know, I couldn't get anyone to impeach Obama for anyone for anything, uh, or put a bill of impeachment in there. And uh, you know, I talked to some members of Congress, uh, Republicans, and they weren't willing to do it. Uh, so. Um, well, I couldn't no. either. Veterans for Peace was the only organization, uh, as I recall, that, that was correct. willing to, to say yes, impeach Obama. And I, I signed their uh, uh, petition in support of impeaching Obama. That's correct. Yeah. But almost no one uh, uh, did this. So, you know, as I see it, this emoluments clause, you know, this is just a, a partisan effort being used by the uh, Democratic Party, um, which, you know, uh, uh, I'm, you know, when I was a kid, the uh, Democrats were waging war in Vietnam. So I'm not going to be affiliated myself uh, with anything uh, uh, that the Democratic Party is running here, one way or the other. Well, let me let me ask you about some other charges that I would bring that, as far as I know, no Democrats or Republicans are proposing. Uh, one would be banning Muslims from the country uh, and having it thrown out by a court and doing it again. Uh, is that not a high crime and misdemeanor? I think you are correct on that, uh, uh, David. Clearly, um, I think a, uh, uh, a, an argument could be made here that it violates the First Amendment to the United States Constitution, and that's what these uh, courts have found. I have, I have read... Uh, um, uh, I guess the opinion out in Hawaii and uh, another opinion out on uh, out on the uh, Ninth Circuit there yeah. um, in, in San Francisco. So clearly, um, uh, I think an argument could be made that if uh, someone wanted to pull uh, put a bill of impeachment in there uh, for uh, violating the First Amendment, uh, I, I I would support that. Yes, but I'm certainly not going to work with a gang of uh, you know Democratic lawyers who have an agenda uh, here uh, to uh, basically reverse uh, the uh, uh, November 8, 2016 election where Clinton lost. And that, I think, is really what's going on here with some of these uh, efforts. Uh, I personally, putting aside the uh, 
you know, the merits of the emoluments clause argument. Um, I think that's the agenda there to to reverse that election and certainly to uh, 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 use it against uh, against Trump. But I want to make clear I didn't vote for Trump and I certainly didn't vote for uh, Clinton, that's for sure. Yes, well, you and me both. Uh, the uh, the defending uh, Hillary and arguing that Hillary would have won if not for foreign interference and corruption, just ignore all the domestic interference and corruption, uh, seems to be part of well, what's driving... Well, you've written about that. Right, uh, you've the... written about that, and I agree with what you said, yes. Yes, yeah, so so I, I wonder both what you make of the of this, this Russia madness and what you make of the argument, well, let's get him for obstruction of justice, even if there wasn't anything uh, there to be found by an investigation. Uh, is, that a, is that a legitimate charge? Well, the uh, anti-Russian uh, hysteria is pure warmongering, as, as you know. Yeah. Clinton decided to uh, use that uh, against Trump uh, in the campaign uh, once, once Trump was uh, nominated. And uh, the Democrats and Clinton and uh, the uh, mainstream news media, all of whom supported Clinton, uh, are continuing this uh, anti-Russian uh, warmongering uh, and hysteria. There's no other word for it. And it is uh, uh, extremely uh, dangerous under the circumstances. And certainly, you know, I think if Clinton had been elected president, we'd be, we'd be at war with Russia now. Um, yeah, the Russians so think so, too. There we are. Uh, I don't know what to say about it, but there's no, uh, I haven't seen any evidence that, uh, you know, Putin uh, corrupted our election or anything like that. I, you know, I think this is all yeah. boulder dash, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I follow these things quite uh, uh, carefully. No, it's, so it's amazing. It's, it's amazing that it goes on and on without any evidence. But then I have people that I respect who say, well, even if there's nothing there, he still obstructed justice, and the cover-up is worse than the crime, and you can go after him for obstruction of justice for firing Comey. What, what do you make of that argument? Uh, I don't think, you know, well, you, you do have to distinguish between uh, the crime of obstruction of justice. I, I was originally hired here to uh, uh, teach criminal law for several years, and right now I don't, I don't see that crime that he uh, he committed. It was different when, uh, you know, you had uh, uh, Archibald Cox, uh, who was a special prosecutor, and uh, uh, a grand jury and everything else like that. That's correct. Um, but and with Clinton too, even though you know the Clinton impeachment was ridiculous, but there too you had Ken Starr and a grand jury and things of that nature. Uh, but. Right now, it's just, you know, the director of the FBI. He was talking with the director of the FBI. We're not exactly sure what they said or why they said it. Uh, what were the reasons behind it? That statute clearly says corruptly. But let me put it this way. Certainly, if, you know, they want to make a case of impeaching him for obstruction of justice, of course, they can do that if they want to. But right now, I don't see the evidence to uh, convict him for a crime. But we have to understand one thing here, uh, uh, David, there are no good guys on either side of this uh, at all. Call me director of the uh, uh, FBI. Uh, Wesley Swearingen, uh, a retired and uh, decorated FBI agent in his book, uh, FBI Secrets, uh, called the FBI, quote, an American Gestapo, unquote. You know, Comey's no hero here at all. He director of the American Gestapo. He worked for uh, President Bush Jr. and Ashcroft at the Department of Justice. He's up to his eyeballs in uh, uh, torture and forced disappearances and all the other uh, hideous atrocities that uh, Bush Jr. inflicted against international human rights, the United States Constitution. As for uh, Mueller, this new uh, uh, special prosecutor, he's just a legal and political hatchet man uh, for the Bush family, uh, the CIA, uh, FBI, and everyone else. Uh, he's a political uh, operative. Mueller was the one who was personally in charge of manufacturing the case that framed uh, Muammar Gaddafi over the uh, Lockerbie bombings. And everyone knows that was a joke, that, that Gaddafi had uh, nothing to do with it. Uh, Libya had nothing to do with it. 
Uh, and yet the order was given by uh, Bush Sr., CIA, uh, to deflect attention from uh, uh, Iran and Syria for uh, because they supported Bush Sr. Uh, on his war uh, against Iraq the first time, and uh, uh, frame uh, Gaddafi in Libya. Yeah. Mueller personally handled that at the uh, uh, Department of Justice. He was in charge of the whole thing. And, and so it was under guy, his leadership that the anthrax investigation went so badly as that well. That is correct. Uh, he, the, he also did the cover-up on the anthrax. There's no question all about it. Uh, and uh, uh, blaming this poor Bruce Ivins guy who committed suicide. Yeah. And uh, um, Mueller has uh, his death on his hands as well. We, we have so, just um, a couple minutes left. Francis Boyle, uh, I think the, the biggest obstacle we may have to impeachment uh, in, in Washington may be exactly as you say, there are no good guys and there's this, this horror of Pence becoming president. You know, we, we make somebody worse president, uh, to which I say, well, if we had a culture of accountability and impeachment, it would that would matter more than who was stepping into the office. But what do you say to all these wise people who say, don't be stupid and make Pence president? Well, I, I you know, personally, uh, in, in my experience on uh, impeachment, uh, going back to uh, Congressman uh, Gonzalez, uh, and also now uh, we find out that uh, 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 Obama uh, did not uh, attack Syria in 2013. Uh, ben Rhodes recently said this, that uh, Obama feared impeachment. Uh, you know, I think it, it would be good to send a shot across the bow of Trump or any other president. Uh, as I tried to do with uh, Bush Sr., I tried to do it with Clinton. I had a campaign impeach Clinton for the right reasons, not uh, having fellatio with uh, right. Monica Lewinsky and lying about it, but all these bombings that he was doing. Uh, and then uh, we just discussed uh, 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 my effort with Ramsey Clark on uh, uh, Bush Jr., and I tried to uh, get you know a member of Congress to introduce Bill of Impeachment against Obama, but I failed. Um, so uh, I, I, we we have a uh, uh, an imperial presidency, as you know. Indeed, after 9/11, 2001, we have a hyper imperial presidency. Um, so I think 30 uh, there is value. There is value in introducing uh, uh, a bill of impeachment, um, and I'm certainly prepared to do that on Syria if a member of Congress wants to talk with me, and also pursuant to your uh, suggestion on the uh, ban against the uh, Muslims and send a shot across uh, Trump's bow uh, it, it, I, and, and the cast of characters surrounding him. I, I think there's value in that. I, I certainly agree. I hope some members of Congress are listening and take you up on it. Francis Boyle, thank you very, very much for coming on Talk Nation Radio. Well, thank you uh, very much, David, for having me on. This is Talk Nation Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. All past shows can be heard at davidswanson.org. Talk Nation Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. If you are listening to a nonprofit station, please support that station. Talk Nation Radio is funded by contributors at davidswanson.org. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. Until next time.